Hi, this is Nikki from Sail Tahiti. Today I'm in Maria visiting a lagoon 421 that's anchored just in front of Maharepa. She's a 2010 model uh, with just one owner, uh, Austrian, who bought her uh, in Europe. For the first five years, she was based in the Mediterranean, um, being sailed just during the summer months and stored for the most part out of the water in between. Um, and then roughly four years ago, her owners set off on a more extended cruise uh, where they've sailed through to the Caribbean and into the Pacific where they now are uh, in French Polynesia. You can see here the trademark Lagoon cockpit, which is really large with a lot of seating space and the semi flybridge uh, over on the starboard side. The Lagoon is set up for short-handed sailing, so from the semi fly you have access to all the electronics, um, including um, Raymarine E140 chart plotter. Um, there is integrated radar, which you can see here, as well as AIS. There's the control for the Yanma 40 HP engines, which have a respectable uh, 2,100 engine hours. The boat is energy autonomous with 750 watts of solar and a wind generator. And here you can see a wind vane self-steering, which is actually the primary auto helm used on the boat in supplement to the Raymarine uh, standard system. So heading onto the forward deck, you can just see in passing the electric winch, which I forgot to mention when we were looking at the helm station. The rigging is overall in very good condition. The owner takes time to oil the junctions, which you could just see there, as I showed you, no sign of rust. There's a full batten mainsail and furling headsail, as well as a symmetrical spinnaker with a snuffer sock. The mainsail and the, um, the Genoa were maintained in 2016 and the spinnaker is almost new. And while we're on the sails, um, the owner replaced all the running rigging in 2019. So here you see the custom hard top cover for the helming station. What's interesting about this is that it uh, has a rainwater collection system. You see here the filters um, and the piping system, which the owner kindly showed me how he connects up. Um, as you see, two filters before it goes into the tanks and up on the roof, you'll see there's a neat uh, hose pipe connecting point and a fairly large area uh, to help supplement water supplies while you're cruising. Everything on this boat is really neat and tidy and well organized. You can see here just taking a quick look into the different lockers. Here the anchor locker uh, with quick windlass. And you'll see there is a stainless steel chain and anchor. So really, really high specification. Here a full kit of tools, uh, really, really nicely stored. And what I didn't manage to film well is um, a Bauer Junior dive compressor as well as three dive sets with bottles and regulators. Here, as we're heading aft, you can see the sunshades, which go all around the cockpit, as well as the SSB radio uh, antenna. So as we head inside, we can see uh, what a roomy boat the Lagoon 421 is. The saloon is very light. It has a full 360 view, as you can see through the, the plexiglass. The galley is also really nicely appointed. There are three fridges, all new in 2016 with a small integrated uh, freezing space. The stove and oven are also new from 2016. The owners really enjoy cooking on board, so there are a couple of extra items of equipment that are Really nice. Um, you can see lots of storage space. Underneath those covers, you'll get a shot in a minute, is a bread maker and a coffee machine. And here's the second fridge, um, new also in 2016, the Kissman brand, which is a good brand. Uh, yeah, there you go. You see the, the, the bread maker and the coffee machine where I've taken the cover off. Uh, uh, there's a rice maker, a kettle, um, really nicely organized space with lots of uh, cupboards, etc. for all for your things.
here you can see a handy uh, cupboard space which is set up to hold all your bottles. So it's the bar if you like. Uh, And in the cockpit is the third fridge, also Kismin. And when we open up the cupboard next door, you'll see that this is the technical spot um, for the water maker. Let's get a look inside. There's the control panel. It's an Ecotec, 50 liters an hour. And the charge capacity and battery capacity of the boat means you can run the water maker without needing to have any other charge solution in place. So here are the electrical panel, um, as you can see with the sonar, everything really neatly labeled, um, well organized. And here, let's just get a close up look on the upholstery. You can see it's um, vinyl leatherette uh, in great condition. For long distance sailing, storage is always important and here a really handy spot being that it's easy to get in and out of uh, where the owners are storing household goods. Uh, the chart table has a handy uh, stall that folds in and out. There are a couple of fun things on the chart table along with the usual battery monitor here for example. Here is a barometer where you could put a paper insert so you can track things over time, uh, the VHF, and here the SSB radio um, and Pactor modem. There's also, of course, uh, a plotter at the chart table, which perhaps I didn't get a good shot of. So here we head down into the port hull. The boat is a uh, four cabin version, so uh, four double cabins. Here we go into the aft cabin. Um, as you can see, a uh, semi-island bed, so lots of space to walk around. Um, ensuite bathroom, which you'll see in a minute. Uh, there's some storage space under the bed um, and then access to uh, the battery control panel. So here we head aft um, to the second double cabin. As you can see, the orientation is a little different, but the configuration is pretty similar. Um, double bed, semi-island style with ensuite bathroom. This boat is also equipped with a heating system uh, with controls in each uh, cabin and here are the classic um, underbed drawers uh, for extra storage. So here we head out of the cabin. Um, on the way we'll take a peek into what is the separate toilet. So there's a shower uh, ensuite to the bathroom and a separate toilet area. And here we're in the starboard hull. Um, so it has the same configuration as the port side, um, aft master cabin with uh, ensuite uh, bathroom uh, shower toilet. Um, and as we go forward, you'll see uh, the forward cabin, uh, same thing, uh, ensuite bathroom with a separate shower and toilet. The owner of Isis likes to be prepared for all occasions and so there's a really extensive um, spare parts uh, aboard. Pretty much everything you'll need to maintain uh, the different equipment on board. So taking a look at the engines, there's a full maintenance log. And then going down into the starboard engine compartment, there's the standard lagoon setup which has uh, wooden boards um, that slot in over the engine. Um, we've taken these out so we can get a look inside. You can see uh, a clean, uh, neat space um, with access to a lot of the electrical and steering equipment needed for the boat. So here, a quick peek into the port side engine, same setup. And as I mentioned before, um, these are Yamaha 40 HP engines. And there, the hydraulic jack for the Raymarine self steering system. And last but not least, the boat has a Carib uh, tender dinghy with the Honda 20 HP four stroke engine. So, thanks for taking a visit with me today. If you want to keep up with what's happening here in Tahiti, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, bottom right. Bye now.